Happy Tuesday, everybody. What a freaking day. Fire alarm. Oh my gosh. Okay. Welcome back to Reality Water Cooler. I am Sarah from Texas, and this is our place to chat all the latest reality TV. Jeff Lewis Live, Jeff Lewis Extended. Uh, if you check Doug, who else posted? Some people told me Doug, Alyssa's Instagrams. I feel like someone else did. Maybe Justin Martindale. Anyways, if you check their Instagrams, oh, maybe Oscar the Voice. Yeah, Oscar posted them going down the stairs. You got a little bit more of what happened during the fire alarm. Have we ever heard? Was there an actual fire? I mean, okay, we will get into all of that. But first, I need your thoughts. What is going on? Did anyone catch the TikTok live from Angela Deem? Angela Deem is from 90 Day Fiance. She's 59, lives in Hazelhurst, Georgia, married to Michael from Nigeria. We learned yesterday that he had been missing since Friday. Um, she maybe didn't call the sheriff until Monday. She was posting on Instagram and TikTok, seemingly sort of normal, if not cryptic. I made a story about it. Um, on Sunday, as if her husband wasn't missing and walked out the front door. I have so many questions. So many questions. I mean, what is going on? She went from like angry, kind of started off. It was a four hour live yesterday. Then there was a four hour break. Then they go live again for two hours last night. And then on that live, we learn that, shout out, Michael. Um, we learn that Michael had called the police to let them know he's safe right after the YouTube live ended. So why wait four hours to go live and let us know that he was safe? And now we learn that or instantly learn that he just doesn't want Angela, his wife, to know where he's at because he's worried for his life. Uh, I mean, the live last night, the two hour one, most of it, Angela is off camera, okay? She's on camera, some of it. And I made some video clips with so, some of that. Uh, but most of it, she's off camera and kind of yelling. Um, but last night, her and her daughter, Sh uh, not Shyla, Skyla, uh, are very mad. And they're very, I mean, and then Angela talks about, uh, I'm not even upset anymore. I'm just mad at myself. Seven years. I, I'm an older woman. I blame myself for this. I knew from the get-go that it was a scam. And somebody, Paul Yates or the guy off camera is saying, no, 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 no. You're, you just were in denial. You just didn't. And she's like, no, I'm going to do a documentary and it's all going to come out. And you're going to know I knew from the beginning and I blame myself. I don't know. It was so weird. So weird. Um, Luna tried to vomit this morning. You know, when you hear that dog sound, it's like, oh, oh. And I'm like, oh my God, I get up and I'm like, let's get out. She got out the door. Thankfully, she's such a good dog. Um, don't know what made her sick, but she seems fine now. She's, she does this about, I don't know. She's done it at least three times. So, I mean, in three and a half years, it's not often, but anyways, um, she was fine every Tuesday. My amazing house cleaners come. She loves them so much. And on Tuesdays, I wash my bedding. The uh, well, the the uh, the top cover, and the sheets, of course, get changed out. But anyways, uh, I had to take a phone call uh, from my doctor's or uh, my daughter's oral surgeon because she was having pain from her wisdom teeth removal. And I'm on the phone, and my daughter sees that Luna has taken my sandwich. You know, when you make a really good sandwich, I normally don't even eat that early. And I was eating lunch really quickly. I don't know why. I made this chicken sandwich with mayonnaise and mustard. I mean, I got about halfway through it. I, I, so it's not like I hadn't eaten a lot. And I had some ruffles. I had some French onion dip. I mean, I had it all. And she got it off my dresser and she's eating it. And then there's mustard all over the middle of my brand clean, brand new, clean, white bedspread. So now I got to take it off and wash it again. Cause I mean, uh, anyways, went to the oral surgeon, drove into Houston really quick and they didn't say it's not dry socket, 
but they said there was food in there. So he gave her a syringe to clean it out. He put some sort of something in there. Where are my oral surgeon friends? I know I've got some that have worked at uh, dentist offices. He put something in there, like a little bead looking kind of big, put it in the socket of, of one. And then he gave her some medicine, a different, different syringe medicine for her to put inside that hole as needed. And then he gave her another syringe to clean, you know, to, to, to clean out any food as she goes to bed, then right before bed, who knows? I wish I would. It was lame, but I love it so much. Christina says, was it a fried chicken or chicken from the deli? I mean, I wish it was that good. It was freaking, um, what's the brand? Not Buttig. It's that super thin chicken sliced deli meat from like a, a Ziploc container that they sell at Walmart. It's so good though. I put like seven slices on there. It was such a good sandwich. Wait, Tiffany Chump, you know exactly what it is. It's Eugenio gel with gel foam. Look at you. Well, okay. Intergalactic Defender. What a name. I hope she doesn't have dry socket. It's the worst feeling ever. So I ask, you know, as a as, as the mom, I'm kind of like, well, what, what, what is the pain? You know, whatever. Because the nurse was like, well, this is day four and she had it Friday. This is the, the peak of her pain. It should get better from now. And I'm like, okay, well you know, I've had four of five kids have their wisdom teeth removed in the last couple of years. So I'm kind of feeling like I know what's kind of normal and what have you. And I really couldn't see back there really well. That's why I couldn't, that's why we went in. I, I just couldn't see if it was red, if it was white, like an infection. Anyways. Um, so then I asked, you know, was it just food? Because my daughter said it was really painful when he was messing with it. And she was kind of, you know, kicking her feet, you know, like together, like, Oh, this is painful. And so I felt terrible. And, um, he was like, well, we don't really know. It could be, I'm like, what do you mean? It could be dry socket. I don't know. Do y'all say, does it sound like it was dry socket? Tiffany Chomp says it will get better with the medicine. Okay. Yeah. It's like a brown yellowy liquid, not very much and a big fat syringe that he gave her and said, just use as needed. And whatever this ball thing he put in there, this gel thing you're saying, he put it in the hole and that will absorb the medicine. Does that sound right? I love this doctor. He's done all four of the, the kids' wisdom teeth and he's not hard on the eyes either, if you know what I mean. I feel like I'm picking a doctor based on looks like Jeff Lewis. Oh my gosh. Okay. Speaking of doctors, sort of, uh, Adrian Maloof, wife, uh, former wife very much went through a, 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 a divorce. Adrian Malou from Royal Housewives of Beverly Hills was on today with Doug Buden. They all looked so professional. I mean, Jeff is extra dressed up. His hair did look extra handsome. I don't know what he did to it. Doug even noticed it and said something about it at the beginning of the show. I mean, I say beginning of the show, y'all, we only got 21 minutes before you hear this uh, fire alarm going off and uh, God, I love Jameson. The fire marshal was like, it's okay. That's fake. It's not real. <laughs> Keep working. <laughs> it was, it was, it was real for sure. Wait, Cecile says it doesn't look like Adrian Maloof. She's beautiful, but yeah. Anyways. Yes. Jake from Kansas. Shout out says I was so looking forward to Adrian on the show. Damn fire alarm. <gasps> Okay, Jeff pays $500 per show. You think he'll take back 40 minutes of that money? <laughs> I mean, it's no one's fault. I feel like it's serious. I don't know. Maybe insurance. I don't know. How does that work? Um, $500. He's paying. I don't know who all he pays. P pays Adrian Maloof. Definitely Doug. I'm assuming he pays... I don't know. I'm assuming he pays Shane also. I don't know. Okay. They open it up. What'd y'all think of the wrestling match thing? I will be honest. Jeff and I have um, one of his boundaries that he and I talked about a few weeks ago on the phone is um, not talking about the Gage and Monroe custody, you know, all those kind of court issues. So as much as he's been talking about it lately, I won't be talking about it um, or encouraging the discussion um, 
but it opens the show with this wrestling thing that that Oscar does this announcement of like you know eye of the tiger and like Jeff versus Gage you know we he's been honest that they are going to court today over a, quite a few issues quite a few issues that are big and um, that affect Jeff that affect Monroe that affect Gage everyone anyways but the biggest thing was he and Jameson had kind of a little kerfuffle. Is that what it's called? Kerfuffle? Argument? Fight? Knockout? I mean, maybe this will, ooh, you think we'll see it on the Jeff Lewis video tonight when it comes out on the app? Oh my God. I do try to, I, well, I watch it every night. If I forget, I watch it the next day. But I do, um, I do prefer kerfuffle. Is that what it's called? Thank you, Melanie. Kerfuffle. Um, yeah. So it was written out. You could hear it. But Jameson, six minutes before the show starts, had some legal concerns. He just for you know to protect Jeff, to protect the show. Also, you know, the last thing Jameson wants to do is make more work for himself and have to go back in and edit out parts of the show if the attorneys or, you know, Sirius XM, whoever get involved and say, uh, we can't say that. It, I'm sort of wondering what they said because it was sort of interesting what it said already, right? Kerfuffle. Kerfuffle. Is that what it's called? Kerfuffle. Oh, shit. Annette, you're right. I would think there would be no video today. Well, I mean, 21 minutes of it? I don't know. It was so weird. Yes, that's very nice. Intergalactic Defender. What a name. Uh, says, prayers for this beautiful child. Prayers for any child going through things. What did you think of... So Jeff does ask Adrienne Maloof about her experience with the divorce of Dr. Paul Nassif from Botched. I mean... I say from botch because I still watch that show. I love it. I love him and Dr. Dubrow together. I love when they jab each other. I love how um, Paul comes back at, 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 at uh, what's Dr. What's Dr. Dubrow's first name? Shit. Heather Dubrow and geez, Louise, Dr. Dubrow. That's all I can freaking call him. Whatever his name is. Y'all are going to tell me in, in comments. Anyways, I love whenever they beef back and forth. And I think they're such good friends. I love it. But, you know, they had a very contentious divorce. They have three uh, boys and they were pretty young when they got a divorce. And uh, I thought it was interesting that Adrienne Maloof said, I think that children of divorce come out stronger. I don't know. I don't know. Is that a good thing though? I mean, I don't know. Everyone I've heard, Terry Dubrow, thank you so much, literally. Um. Yes, Christina said the video might be everyone looking around and grabbing their stuff and going out the door. But listen, didn't you hear Jeff keep doing the live reads after they went to commercial and then they hear the beep in the background? And they're like, I think that's real. <laughs> like, we need to get out of here. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, that would be great, Tiffany Chump, if they add video from the outside because Sam was out there with you saw Sam out there with the camera. Oh, that's sort of amazing that he thought to pick up a freaking camera or even his phone, right? Yes, I agree. May Boo says, depends on how the parents are about each other. And I have talked to so many people on DM and the phone about um, their personal experience with divorce and uh, being respectful of each other in front of the parents or in front of the kids, no matter what. So yeah, Annette says it's different for each situation. That's true. That's true. Shout out, Krista. Um, anyways, thought it was really good. Um, I just sort of wonder what the what the version was before Jameson tamed it down, right? Um, okay, so I know he'll be promoting it. Today's only Tuesday, but Thursday night's cooking kibitz. Doug's got the Smith sisters and John Hill. What a get. Like, that's amazing. That'll be amazing. Um, so Jeff tells us more or more. He had never told us this. I don't think. So Sunday, we know from Instagram that because they like posted pictures and tagged it, that his producer slash friend, Michael Beck, uh, they went out for drinks. Uh, I don't think Shane was with them at all, right? They start off at the Abbey. They see Sutton and her friend or friends there. And from there, they move on to high tops. He tells us today now he met a dude and he's making out with 
the dude at high tops in front of everyone. Shane is like, oh my God, if I'm not there to protect you, like what the hell? And then they go to some place called Trump Trunks, another bar that's really dark. And Jeff's like, I feel so hot because I'm so dark. It's so dark in here. And, you know, I look so hot and sexy. I don't know. That's about it. And then they freaking the fire alarm comes. We did see a video of an actual fire truck. Um, I don't know. Lots of jokes on the after show. Ryan Bailey and Justin Martindale picked up as if nothing ever happened. I mean, so profesh. They had amazing callers. Someone named Caller Judy, she just had her house catch on fire in December. And then she was given divorce papers soon after from her husband of I don't know how long, but Judy said she's 55 years old and she's known the guy since she was 13. Wow, she sounded better than me. Another caller called in later, said she's been in three fires in her house. One when she was a little kid and her brother accidentally started it in the middle of the night. He almost, it was almost really bad for him. He's not. And they've got a nickname of him of like, what was the nickname? Hear that noise. Um some nickname about him catching the house on fire. And they're like, wow, y'all have a real sense of humor. Like, interesting. What? What a weirdo. Somebody's being weird about asking how to get their socks out of the dryer. I'm like, bye. <laughs> Torch, was that his name? Yes, Torch. How interesting. Oh my gosh. Um, anyways, my mom, my mom never stated my dad slated. What does slated mean? That must be a London term Sl put down. Is that what that means? Maybe in English terms slated my dad, she would say it just didn't work out, but he was a good man. I have no hangups and put it down to her positive attitude. I love that. I love hearing that. I love that. Oh, <gasps> Krista. Fires are terrifying. My friend's brand new Lexus burst into flames in the garage and burned their house, their mansion, brand new custom built mansion to the ground. Fire is scary. I agree. When I was president of mom's club, when my kids were little, um, at least once, maybe more than once, I had a fire police, a fire come, a fire person come out to our house. And one of the main things they did was checked my house. But one of the main things they told me is to unplug, you know, we have five kids. We had about two or three at one time, the little Barbie Jeep. We had a Cadillac Escalade, you know, the little cars with the little 12 volt batteries that you plug in and got to keep them charged because all the friends and the neighbors and the family comes over. Uh, they said those catch on fire often. I was petrified. I was like, oh my God. So, cause you know, we would leave those and charge them overnight. And then if you didn't play outside or if you didn't do that particular toy, you know, it might stay charged for two or three days. Fires are definitely terrifying for sure. Um, that is terrible. I hope everyone was okay, Krista. I'm hoping. Um, anyways, Ryan and Justin had a really good show though. Um, they just handled it really well. Talked about um, uh, a lot of calls. They kind of made jo jokes about... Um, jokes about the fire and everything. It was good. Hair straighteners are a big problem. Ooh. Wait, what? I had no idea. Jake from, look at us being like fire information here. If you suddenly smell fish, that's what a house fire first smells like. Why? That's so interesting. Fish. I guess I would think it smells like a gas, but that's just a gas fire. I don't even know. Who knows? That's very scary. Um, oh, Krista says, okay, they all lived and are great people of faith, but they couldn't stop the fire. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely get out first for sure. That is that is scary. I don't know what that means. Um, fire department doesn't like plug-ins. Yeah. 
Oh, it's the insulation burning smell. That's interesting. Is that put in there on purpose? You know how they put, um, what's the smell they put in gas to make it smell? Because otherwise you wouldn't know it's gas, right? Hoverboards. Yes, we heard about that too. And of course we went through a hoverboard stage. I wonder if we still have that one hoverboard. We had a hoverboard. Luckily she would do it in the house most of the time. Luckily, I don't know, hardwood floors. Um, but they didn't stay charged as long because as we charged it, it was in the house and visible. Whereas these little cars, the little Barbie Jeep and the, the Cadillac Escalade we had, you know, I might plug it in at three o'clock in the afternoon when we came inside to put the kids for a nap. You might forget about it. it might stay charged in there for two to three days. You know what I mean? Um, yes. Yes. We don't know what is going on with the Michael and Angela. If anyone saw Angela's TikTok live, let me know. Because apparently she went live in the middle of the night and then again this morning on TikTok though. Yesterday's lives were all under YouTube live on John Yates. Did Sarah cover Michael and Angel already? Yes, we already did talk about that, Krista. But it's ongoing, I guess. Has TLC come out with a story yet or a statement? Have the police come out with a statement? Uh, I'm, I'm told they're filming now, but don't you think TLC would be filming as they're there? I, I don't know. I'm so confused on the whole thing. Oh, somebody is super smart. Look at you. I'm good. Are you? THT and DMS are among the most popular chemicals added to natural gas. I can't even say those words. Tetrahydrothiophene in dimethyl, dimethyl sulfide. I don't even know. Those are really smart words. Um, yeah, I'm told that too, Krista, that Angela from 90 Day Fiance broke the NDA with TLC to do the live with John Yates. But that has nothing to do... <laughs> In NDA, breaking that, I understand that she did that. But why did she not call the police until Monday? Why was she going like posting these Instagram, you know, those like quotes that are kind of weird? Probably still have them on my phone. I made a story of it. It was just weird. She posted like six or seven quotes on Sunday on Instagram. And then on her TikTok, she did a duet you know how you can do a duet with somebody talking about uh wendy williams as if as if nothing's going on we didn't know about her her uh husband being missing at that point one of them she wrote this is one of the pictures manipulation is when they blame you for your reaction to their disrespect period read that again period she posted this on sunday as bad as you want to address it, sometimes it's best to let God defend you. He saw it too. I mean, it's just so weird. The faker you are, the bigger your circle will be. The realer you are, the smaller your circle will be. I mean, like multiple, uh, these stories, these Instagram stories. And like, nobody's talking about that. I'm so, Mighty thinks it's all produced by Michael and Angela. Don't you think they'll get in trouble for that? Like, did anyone ever see a police officer, especially if you live in the Georgia area, and this might have been local news, uh, like on your news? Uh, it's so weird. Angela's Instagram is Angela Deem, D-E-E-M, D-E-E-M. Her TikTok, I might have it switched, is Deem Angela. So one of them is backwards. Well, I can tell you, I guess. Um. But see, TikToks, TikToks don't, uh, TikToks don't, uh, the lives don't save. Let's see. Her TikTok is Angela Deem 1.27, whatever that means. She's got 727,000 TikTok followers. Nothing's, I mean, this is the, um, this is her most picture of her and Jeff. I mean, her and Michael. This is the duet she did Sunday. Doesn't seem like her husband's missing there. These are all old. But now we know he's been uh, at her house or he's been in America since right before Christmas. 
So weird. Yes, May Boo says, I must admit, I hate quotes from people on Instagram. I mean, there it's it, it's kind of like vague posting, right? On Facebook, like pray for me and then not say anything about what's going on or, you know, just vague posting, I guess. It's just, it's trying to say something about your situation without saying it. I don't know. I thought it was very interesting and I, I couldn't believe nobody was talking about it. I'm like, why hasn't anyone looked at her Instagram? Why hasn't people said, um, you know, why are you posting this stuff on Sunday when your husband's been missing for two days? And then if you see the lives, she's all over the place with, you know, thinking he's scamming her. I knew this. I was worried about him. I was worried for his safety. Apparently he was with a seven-year-old, his, uh, well, Skyla's, one of Skyla's kids, they explain it a little bit more. She was actually airlifted from their house at like the end of January, they're saying, and she had to have like life-threatening, like something really bad. Bunch of cysts in her head and she that they didn't know about and she fell and hurt her head. And that's when the cysts broke open and something like, it was confusing. Uh, but I mean, Skyla and Angela are ranting and raving off camera at the end of the, um, not the end, but kind of the middle of the last two hour one that was last night on YouTube. So it was a lot. Yeah, Krista said there was a lot going on with that relationship. I mean, yeah, if they called the police department, I almost think she just called TLC. I don't even know. If they called the police department and it's fake, they'll all be in trouble. One thing Angela keeps saying is since he is saying he's afraid of her, he's trying to get this asylum visa, basically saying that there's been abuse and that he's terrified of her. Uh, she's saying, about either him or um, Usman, another 90 day fiance person, basically saying, don't, you know, these people think they can come to our country and say things. She used the word, um, uh, what's it called? Like if, if you, not scandalous, when you say things about somebody like derogatory things that, you know, the U S can come and get them and send them back to their country. I don't know. It was, it was weird. Weird, weird, weird. Um, why are we getting all these weird people in here today? <laughs> ah, slanderous. Yes, slander was the word that she used for sure. For sure, for sure. Krista, I mean, they didn't talk about it. They seem like she goes for lunch and goes and gets food every day. So if this was planned out, then that's the time he did to go. To, but Krista says he could be charged for child and abandonment for leaving that child alone while in charge of her care. I didn't realize how young she was, but she was seven. Y'all, that's very young. And, and you know, she'd just, just gotten out of the hospital. Oh, Daily Mail has a story on them. Interesting read. Okay, I'll check that out in a second. For sure. Daily Mail. Daily Mail is pretty legit, right? I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I they are the ones that broke um, the Tory Spelling thing the quickest uh, of her living in the, uh, her living in the, uh, hmm, I don't see anything quickly. See, they're talking about Tory Spelling moving into the $15,000 a month home. I don't see anything on this. Um, on Daily Mail's Instagram, but there might be a story somewhere else. Not sure. Anyways, what else is going on? If not, we will end a little bit early because there was only 20 minutes of a show. TMZ have the stories. Okay, now TMZ, I trust. I've got TMZ on my... I love TMZ. Do y'all watch TMZ, the TV show? I do love it. Um, why don't I see it? My TMZ starts with um, ex UFC star Carmen Electra, Kanye. I don't know Willy Wonka. I don't see it. We'll look at it later. Anyways, okay. Um. Tanya says she thinks she's smart. That way he could get his own visa. That way she would not be financially responsible. Um, 
Because some are saying, I've learned so much off 90 Day Fiance about these visas and everything. Um, yeah. Oh, somebody says, Annette says, I just can't wait for traders. I did like the traders talk that Ryan and Justin were having on the show today on Jeff Lewis Extended. Uh, they both admitted they texted MJ right after last week and were like, well, whose name did you write down, Phaedra or Peter? And she was like, dude, I'm not telling y'all. I love that they both uh, text her though and ask that. Um, how is Luna Bug? She's good. She's good. She throws up like yellow. It's, is that like your stomach acids or something? Some dog person needs to tell me. Um, the three times she's thrown. No, she's thrown up dog food before because it was a chunk of dog food. But that was months ago. But um, anyways, I did. Tiffany Chump says, did you hear Andy talking about Jeff this morning? So remember last week, a caller called in and they were like, Jeff, I just want to compliment you. You're the reason I have Radio Andy. You're the reason that I have uh, Sirius XM. And they were kind of joking and Jameson kind of was like cutting her off like, oh, thank you. We don't have any time. Like, you know, complimenting Jeff. Jeff was like, are you sure you're calling the right people? And she was like, you just love people. You love talking to people. Um, you you're always so very interested in them. So all of a sudden on Andy Cohen Live this morning, they're playing this and Andy has no idea what it's going to be about. He's like, this is about Jeff Lewis, Jeff Lewis extended. Do I want to hear this? Am I going to like this? And um, they air this because, and they air the part where the woman is like, yeah, I mean, there's people that interview people and they just don't seem to be interested in other people. They just cut them off and they're just kind of rude. And the, he, she was talking about Andy Cohen and Andy was like, I mean, I mean, sometimes I do cut people off. I think it's funny sometimes to be rude to call her. So it was interesting though. Thank y'all for wishing Luna good, uh, to feel better. Thank you. Um, it was good though. He did touch on the Wendy Williams, which I thought was interesting because he said something he and he and uh, John Hill felt very strongly that that it was exploitative, um, that they did take it, they, that they shouldn't have shown Wendy in the light. I mean, Andy was like, she doesn't, someone in that condition doesn't deserve, doesn't need to be on TV at all. And pretty much says, um, I think it's because of Kevin Sr. I think she had all these issues after Kevin Sr. So um, anyway, so that was interesting, but he definitely said I was asked to participate in it. And I thought he said he refused, but I'm like, you were on it. So was that an old interview that they threw in there? I don't know. Andy Cohen was definitely interviewed a couple of times. I thought it was, I don't know. Didn't know why he said he refused to participate, but then he absolutely was in it. So it was interesting. Um, ooh, bile is yellowish liquid from the stomach. Ooh, I'm good. Are you? Okay. Okay. Uh, anyways. Oh, oh, you're right, Tiffany Chump. You're so right. He was in the documentary that was called Wendy Williams, What a Mess. You're right. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Anyways, what else? We've got like 12 more minutes left. What do y'all want to chat about? What is on tonight? Tonight is Tuesday. Is tonight the Beverly Hills finale? Wow. Are we going to get um, Kathy Hilton on tonight or is she on the next one? I did watch a 90 day fiance last night. Um, I did see that. Um, uh, Debbie's son, Julian did meet Ruben the Cuban. He was, you know, he was somewhat nice to her. Uh, I don't know. I just saw it. somebody who sent me a, a TikTok or something, something, a video of Debbie from 90 Day Fiance and her son, Julian, who's an adult police officer, obviously concerned for his mom. But um, because she the last time she left the country, sold her house, all this stuff. She went to Morocco for a 24 year old and she is 67. So clearly that didn't work out. And now she's she's in Atlanta and Ruben the Cuban lives in Miami, so quite a distance. Uh, anyways, and of course, she always feels infatuated at, at, at first sight. Um, yes, we can talk about Brielle Bierman being engaged, Krista. Um, I 
thought it was weird. I think other people talked about it before, um, before Kim Zolciak announced it. I don't know. I thought that was weird. I mean, I definitely saw it yesterday. And then I saw the thing on um, uh, Kim Bierman and, and, and posting about it today. I don't know. Um, talking about Botox. Below Deck. I haven't watched Below Deck in so long. I am so looking forward to 90 Day Fiance, The Single Life, um, The Tell All. I think there's two of them. Not, I mean, TLC knows how to do a tell all. That is definitely one thing they, I think they could show Bravo a little few tips for sure. Oh, Krista says, I'll be shocked if that propo proposal makes it to the altar. I mean, yeah, you never know, right? You never know. Does somebody, does Shay Mays, do you think Kim is coming back on Real Housewives of Atlanta? I know I saw someone post, uh, was it by wig? What's the, what's the Instagram by wig? Somebody, po some people post things that I, I think are absolutely not true. And then they post it by wig. Hello drama. I did see something posted yesterday. Um, well, did they delete it? Maybe it wasn't that account. Something about being true. I don't know what it was. Two days ago. Buying Beverly Hills returns March 22nd on Netflix. I don't know what it was. Maybe it wasn't that account. Um, I did wonder if Andy Cohen would yet again talk about, or uh, ever, uh, would say something about the Brandy Glanville, but I didn't hear it today. So anyways. Um, Thank you, Sarah. You seem to be back to yourself today. Thank you. Um, enjoying the Jeff Lewis content too. I try to get, it's so hot here. Um, I did try to take a walk this morning, which I haven't done on the regular. I've just been doing body pump. Uh, I hate cold weather, but it was so, such good weather this morning. And my neighbor was outside and she is so chatty. So I took about a 15 minute walk that was supposed to be an hour walk. And, you know, Anyways, yes, as far as I know, mighty. So they said, are Nikki and Justin from 90 Day Fiance broken up? They were my most interesting and favorite this season. And I just raved about them at the end of last week when I recapped that show because they are the only ones that were on uh, 90 Day Fiance this season that didn't have plans to get married because they don't have the, the visa yet. Everyone else was getting married and everyone else did get married. We kind of wondered if this one couple would go down the aisle or not. And they did. Um, she made him, you know, sweat it out for like 30 minutes or 40 minutes till she was late to the altar. But she ended up marrying him. Uh, Clayton. Is that when? Yeah, Clayton and Amani, Alani, something like that. Um, but Justin and Nikki were so on the same page. And then they had even had sex the night before she left back to come to the U S he stays in Moldova because they don't have the visa yet. And then she goes to do an interview like a normal, uh, about two weeks after she got back to the States to do a, a, a confession for TLC. And she had gotten a text breakup from Justin basically saying, look, I've, I've, we just, we're not on the same page. Like, I guess they fight a lot. Nikki's like, well, I am rude to him, but I just thought it was like a normal fight. We'd be fine. I mean, it's very contentious. Uh, I just think they've spent a lot of time together and they don't want to waste it. Um, Nikki's 47. Uh, I think Justin is in the 35 year age range. I'm not real sure, but they've been together a long time. I think they dated and then broke up and then dated, got back together. So yeah, I really wanted them to be together. And, and you just see Nikki, uh, her mom shows up to her house, apartment, whatever. And she's just in the bed, just devastated. And her mom's like, let's get out. Let's go to a park. Let's, you know, get your mind off of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jameson. Oh, okay. 
Me thinks Jameson, maybe me thinks Jameson is in for more training now. I did love how he was joking on the Jeff Lewis extended about, um, you know, firing himself as the fire marshal because he was pretty much the one going, yeah, um, you know, it's just fake. It's not even real. Um, oh, thank you, Krista. I have watched you walk through unjust hell and come out smelling like a rose. I don't think I quite smell like a rose. What happened was so unfair. I'm so happy your glow is back. You're amazing. Thank you. Won't lie. Um, very rough, unexpected, mind-boggling, hurtful. Um, learned a lot of lessons. Anyways. Um, yeah. Yes, Sarah, you got to learn how to get the VPN and watch some of the 90 Day Fiance shows. Uh, do the apps work? Thank you, Tanya. We love you. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Do Okay, this is a dumb question, but I don't know. I've always lived in Houston, Texas area. Do apps, hmm, I guess not, because SiriusXM is denied except for the U.S. and maybe Mexico. I'm not sure. Is it all of North America? Or can, uh, Canada and the U.S. Can Mexico get Sirius XM? Anyone know? ALW, what doesn't break us makes us stronger. I mean, yes. Thank you. Um. Anyways, what else? Let's talk about some positive stuff. What is going on? I'm hoping Vanderpump rules. I think. I think this week will be episode five. I'm hoping it stays good. I am not excited for this, the Valley show. And I don't even think it has a date to start, right? They're just saying the spring. Uh, my girl, I love her account. You know, Nat on TikTok. She's also on Instagram. You know, K-N-O-W-N-A-T, Nat. She's Natalie. Um, she posted the, like, a, I don't know how long it, well, it's on TikTok. She posted the, um, the preview for it. Um, I, I'm not even excited for it. I think the commercial, as I've told y'all before, I don't love the commercial, um, the for valley. the, um, yeah, it's the Valley. It's the whole preview of it. It just says coming spring. Anyways, who knows? Uh, I'm not excited for it though. I don't know. Oh, Krista, just I just gave an update. How are my kiddos' wisdom teeth healing? We just went to an emergency checkup and because she was having throbbing pain and they didn't rule out dry socket, but we're on the mend, we think. We've got some stuff. Um, oh, Vanderpump Villas, Sarah. Oh, God, I saw a date for that. Uh, I saw a date for that. You know, I feel like everything's starting in March. Uh, which makes sense, right? That's when they start promoting everything. So it makes sense. Um, yeah. Yes. Christina says, I don't think anyone wants to watch that. Are you talking about the Valley? I mean, Maybu, don't even get started on 90 Day Fiance. It's so addictive. It's literally so addictive. And they have so many franchises. And then they do these one-offs. And I mean, oh my God, it is a full-time job just doing 90 Day Fiance. Um, the Sarah Fraser show covers a lot of 90 Day Fiance and she covers, she follows all those people. So she always knows what's going on uh, for that. So um, March 19th is the premiere date. Fraud Exposer. What is your, what is that name on YouTube with no picture? Cecile says, I will watch the Valley. I mean, I'll watch it. Don't give me, I mean, of course I'll watch it, but I may just hate watch it. Yes, the trailer. That's what I was talking about on, uh, you know, Nat. Um, Tiffany Chump, I don't have the strength. I do not have the strength to start 90 Day Fiance. Girl, I'm not even kidding you. I, 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 that's what I do. My name is Fraud Exposer. Wow. Um, well, expose me because I'm absolutely not a fraud. Um, I started, I think, was it August? No, it could have been because that's when she went away to college. 
one of my daughters and I started the summer of 2020. We started with episode one, season one of uh, 90 Day Fiance. And I had no idea how many, you know, and since 2020, clearly even more have come out. But it's 90 Day Fiance, 90 Day Fiance the other way, 90 Day Fiance uh, the single life, 90 Day Fiance. I mean, it's so many. Uh, happily ever after. Don't get started on the pillow talks and the, I mean, it is so much. Anyways, thank you, fraud exposure. It's nothing to do with you. Um, anyways, well, thank you so much for joining live. It is way more fun to get comfortable in comments. If you are watching on the replay, tell us in the comments what you think. We still want to know if you're listening to the podcast at Sarah from Texas, please do a five-star rating and review. Make sure you're following me everywhere at Sarah from Texas and make sure you join the Facebook group, Sarah from Texas. It's such an easier way to, uh, just to get to know each other and to have like a subject and then to chat underneath it and like keep all of our conversations together. We pretty much chat anything respectable reality TV and Jeff Lewis obsessed or Jeff Lewis, <laughs> woo, Jeff Lewis um, related. So anyways, bye chumpettes.